we're going to do what we call unidimensionality. And that has to be done for each of our constructs. So we got three constructs, so we're going to have to do it three times. So let's get back to Amos. Now it's time to introduce you to Amos. To find Amos on SPSS, you're going to go to Analyze. And you can't see it here, so I'm going to pull this up a little bit. You're going to go to Analyze, all the way down at the bottom, Amos 19. And you're going to give it a second because it's a big program. So hold on. Amos pulling up here. And here's a new Amos work page. Okay, so now we're going to get started. All right, a lot of this stuff we covered in the path analysis video, so if you need some refresher courses on that, please check out that section in the Hawk. We continue with the SEM. Okay, step three, model identification. All right, I need to refresh my memory what the model looks like, and it looks just like that. So we're going to do competency first, okay? So back to Amos. First thing you're going to do is... Draw a circle. I'm going to move it a little bit with my little truck. Beep, beep. Okay, then you're going to add the boxes. We got one, two, three, four. We want a best fit. So we're going to go down to this little guy here. This one right here makes it fit the screen. Okay. So far, so good. Okay, so we go to insert data. We're going to put the, the data information into the rectangles, the measured variables, right? So these are all our C's. So this is going to be C1, C2, C3, C4. And I'm going to clean this up. Give me one second. So you close out of this. All right, so you go to the square. You right-click on it object properties you just basically delete the variable label we're just going to use the variable name and you can click on you can just click on them one at a time and just delete the label click delete the label click delete the label and we should be good let me see if that c one two three four yay we got it right now it's time to name the construct. So remember, the construct isn't a measured variable. It's something that you, as the researcher, have to come up with. So we're just going to call this comp competency. I can't even pronounce it. Competency. And that's going to be our title. I'll make that font a little bit bigger so we can all see it. How does that look? That looks pretty good. Okay. Next is we have to identify the little circles as error terms. Okay, I'm going to, this, this program is a little bit larger than my window frame. So next is we got to name um, the error terms, the little circles. We're going to go to plugins, name unobserved variables, and so that automatically makes some error terms. All right, now it's time to check the factor loading of each of the measured variables onto the new construct. Now, by default, Amos is automatically going to make the first measured variable of, of a factor of 1, but that is not always the case. So we're going to have to double check that. We're going to go ahead and go to Calculate. Oh, yeah. We have to save it. Hold on. Okay, after naming it, then we're going to go to the output for the text. Okay, so again, we're going to look at the factor loadings of this construct. Pull it down here. Come on, you. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to go to estimates. And here's our factor loadings. Now, we have a problem here because the largest factor loading seems to be C2, right? It's a little bit bigger than C4, but C2 should be marked as number one. So what this is going to do is we're going to mark C2 as one, and the Amos software program is going to go ahead and recalculate the other measured variables and give them a lower estimate for their factor loading. That process is called unidimensionality. So hold on. All right, so I'm going to close this, and I'm going to right-click on this arrow, right, C2. All right, first you should probably delete that one. We're going to go to Object Properties, Parameters, and we're going to remove the one that was the default set by the computer. And we're going to put number two. Actually, we're going to right-click here. Go to Object Properties. Let me close this one out. Sorry. 
my co-pilot is giving me attitude. So we're going to right click here. Make sure it's red. Object properties. This is the one we're going to set as one. Okay. Boom. And so the computer automatically reset all the other ones. That Again, that is the process of unidimensionality. And I'm going to prove it to you by we're going to recalculate. We're going to go back to the estimates. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Computer difficulties. We're going to go back to estimates. So see what it did? The largest loading factor is now one. And it, it used mathematics to um, basically restructure the other loading factors of the other variables. But now we're good to go for competency anyway. Now we have to repeat this for attitude and for preparedness. So we did number two for you. It was just like, we did attitude for you. It was just like the other one. Um, so we're trying to make a short video. So we, we already calculated it. So we're going to check the, let me pull this over so you can see it. Bam. We're going to check the estimates of the factor loadings. So according to this one, A2 had the highest factor loading and that was set. Very important. You always got to make sure that the other factor loadings have to be less than one. Okay, so this one works out fine. Let me pull up the last one, and that would have been preparedness. Please hold. All right, last check. So this is also called constraining. Okay, so different books use different terms. But here's the preparedness construct, and we already calculated, so we're just going to go check the estimates. Pagadoom. And good. So P4 is the winner here. And the other three factor loadings are all less than one. So we have attained unidimensionality for each of our constructs. So we need to move on now.